Hi everyone, welcome back to another lesson. This lesson is on weird signs and symptoms of anemia that we can find on our skin, in our nails, and in our mouth as well. So these are going to be dermatological findings of anemia. Before we talk about those dermatological findings, let's talk about what anemia is. So if we were to actually look at the word anemia, we can actually break it down. The prefix an refers to lack, and the suffix emia refers to a blood condition. So the word anemia simply means a lack of blood or a condition of a lack of blood. And more specifically, anemia is a low hemoglobin count or a low hematocrit. So red blood cells are full of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin carries oxygen to the tissues. So in anemia, we have low hemoglobin and hematocrit is the percentage of the blood that is made up of red blood cells. So either of these can be used to make the diagnosis of anemia. And the thresholds for making the diagnosis are going to differ between males and females. So here are some numbers that can be used for thresholds for making the diagnosis. Other labs will use other numbers. So in males, less than 130 grams per liter of hemoglobin would be enough to say that patient has anemia. In females, it's less than 120. And with regards to hematocrit, it's less than 0.41 in males and less than 0.38 in females. And anemia can be broken down into different causes. We can separate anemia into acute anemia and chronic anemia. So acute anemia is going to be where there is a rapid drop in red blood cell numbers or a rapid drop in hemoglobin. This can occur by conditions that involve hemolysis. So hemolysis is breakdown of red blood cells and hemorrhage, which is a loss of blood. So either the patient is bleeding out or they have some kind of internal hemorrhage or internal bleeding. And with regards to chronic anemia, this is where red blood cell number and hemoglobin is going to slowly decrease over time. And this is going to occur in conditions where we have nutritional deficiencies. This can include iron deficiencies, vitamin B12 deficiencies, folic acid deficiencies. Also in gastrointestinal conditions like celiac disease, we can also see it with insidious blood losses. So very small blood losses like we can see in gastrointestinal or GI losses or GI bleeds. And chronic conditions like liver disease. So in the next upcoming slides, we're going to talk about dermatological or skin findings we can see in these types of anemias, especially the more common ones. So we're not going to talk about all dermatological findings from anemia, but we'll talk about the most common ones. So one of the first ones we can see with anemia is pallor. So we can see this in light skin toned individuals. So this skin paleness is going to be due to less red blood cell number within blood vessels and capillaries that leads to reduced skin coloration. So we can see this on the face. We can see this on the lips. We can also see it on the nail bed. So if you actually look at the nail bed, it can be paler than usual and on the palmer creases as well. So the palmer creases are the creases of your hand. If you actually look at the creases on your hand, they may even be pale as well. This can be a sign of anemia again, because we have less blood going through those capillaries to cause that coloration. We can also see issues with conjunctival pallor. So conjunctival pallor is going to be a reduced red coloration of the anterior rim of the conjunctiva. We can see this by pulling down on our eyelid. So we can see this paleness. It should be a pink color, but in this image we can see paleness of the conjunctiva. So this is conjunctival pallor. This is most commonly going to occur in severe cases of anemia. We're not going to see it in mild cases. It's going to be severe cases where hemoglobin is less than 90. Now with regards to anemia, we can also have a rash as well. So this can be what we call an anemia rash. This rash is going to be pruritic, meaning that it's going to be itchy, and it's going to occur more specifically in iron deficiency anemia. So this is the most common type of anemia worldwide. And it's going to be erythematous, meaning that it's going to be reddened, and it's going to be maculopapular, meaning that we're going to have macules and papules. Macules are flat skin lesions, less than 10 millimeters in diameter. Papules are raised skin lesions, less than 10 millimeters in diameter. So small skin lesions that are some raised and some flattened. Again, they're going to be reddened in appearance and they're going to be itchy. And there are some theories as to why this occurs in iron deficiency anemia. It's believed to be due to increased water losses from the skin. Some patients can also have what we call scleral icterus. This is going to occur in cases of hemolysis. And again, more specifically, this is going to be in acute anemia, but it can occur in some types of chronic anemia due to, for instance, a vitamin B12 deficiency. So again, hemolysis is a breakdown of red blood cells. And these breakdown of red blood cells are going to lead to the release of hemoglobin into the blood. And the hemoglobin is going to be broken down into what we call bilirubin. Now, all of that hemoglobin that's going to be broken down into bilirubin is going to lead to elevations in bilirubin. This is going to lead to what we call hyperbilirubinemia, which is a high level of bilirubin in the blood. And this bilirubin is going to lead to a yellowing coloration of the sclera of the eyes. The sclera is the whites of the eyes. 
The reason that this happens is because the sclera, or the whites of the eyes, has a very high elastin content. So the bilirubin is going to bind to that elastin, and that's what's going to cause this yellowing coloration in the eyes. This is what scleral icterus is. And because bilirubin likes to bind to elastin, and there is such a high elastin content in the sclera of the eyes, this is actually one of the earlier signs of hyperbilirubinemia. So we can even see this before the next finding here, jaundice. So jaundice is a yellowing of the skin, and this hyperbilirubinemia we just talked about can eventually lead to a yellowing of the skin as bilirubin binds to the elastin in the skin. So it usually occurs after scleral icterus. So we can often see a yellowing of the whites of the eyes first, and then we can see a yellowing of the skin in general. And again, this can also occur in conditions involving hemolysis or breakdown of red blood cells, which can again lead to acute anemia, that sudden drop in red blood cell number, or in certain types of chronic anemia, such as an anemia from a vitamin B12 deficiency, for instance. And we can also see something called Gray-Turner sign. So Gray-Turner sign is where there are these flank ecchymoses. So ecchymoses are these large collections of superficial bleeding in the skin, so essentially a bruise. And again, these flank ecchymoses that occur on the side of the patient, so their side of their abdomen, is going to be indicative of a retroperitoneal hemorrhage. So retroperitoneal hemorrhage is where there's internal bleeding behind the peritoneum. So it's retroperitoneal bleeding. So again, internal bleeding can lead to this particular skin finding. So if patients were in an accident or if they had some other injury, this can lead to internal bleeding and this can be a potential sign of that acute bleeding internally. This can also be found in certain pancreatitis conditions as well, so this is something else to think about. Now, some other findings that we can see that are associated with anemia that are more due to the causes of particular types of anemia include atrophic glossitis. So atrophic glossitis is where there's inflammation of the tongue and eventual loss of texturing of the tongue. So it can be inflammation of the tongue, and then eventually the grooves and the texturing of the tongue can be lost and you become very smooth, and this is what we call atrophic glossitis. This occurs in vitamin B12 deficiency. Roughly 25% of cases of vitamin B12 deficiency will have this finding. We can also see it in iron deficiency as well. And again, both of these particular nutritional deficiencies are important causes of anemia. And then we can also see aphthous ulcers as well. These are canker sores. And these can also occur in iron deficiency anemia as well. And then we can also see issues with the nails. So nail health can be abnormal or impaired. One particular nail finding we can see is what we call coilonychia. Coilonychia is a spooning of the nails. So the nails actually develop this spoon shape. This is going to more specifically occur in iron deficiency anemia. And we can also see brittle nail syndrome being associated with anemia as well. So brittle nail syndrome is going to be more specifically found in iron deficiency cases. So iron deficiency anemia can be associated with brittle nail syndrome. And brittle nail syndrome is where the nails actually become brittle, they become difficult to grow, they have these longitudinal ridges which are these lines on the nail, and again they have increased breakability, meaning that they break apart very easily. And then the last finding we can see in anemia is angular chelitis. So angular chelitis is going to be inflammation and cracking of the corners of the lips as we can see in this image here, and this is going to be found in vitamin B12 deficiencies and iron deficiencies. Again, important nutritional deficiencies that can cause anemia. So again, these particular findings are going to be associated with anemia. They're not going to be something that's directly found in anemia, but they can be found in the causes of anemia. Please check out my lesson on iron deficiency anemia and vitamin B12 deficiency. And if you found this lesson helpful, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.